You find yourself near a quicksand pit. You start here at 1, 0, and you need to get to the finish here at minus 3, 0. What is the optimal path you should take to minimize the total time traveled? There's a catch, though. Your speed you can run at gets larger based on how far away you are from the pit's center. For example, if you are one meter away from the pit, then you can run at a speed of one meter per second in whatever direction you choose. But if you find yourself three meters away from the pit's center, you can run at a speed of three meters per second. Can you solve it? So your speed is equal to the total distance from the pit center, where speed is defined as ds dt. Rearranging for dt and integrating gets us an expression for the total time along our path, capital T. Now we want to minimize this time, capital T, by choosing a function to describe our path, y. But before we get started, let's talk about this term ds in a little bit more detail. ds is an infinitesimal distance along our chosen curve. So using the Cartesian coordinate system, ds is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. But the Cartesian coordinate system might not be wise in our case. Remember, our speed is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which using the cylindrical coordinate system is just r, where r is the distance you are from the pit and theta is the angle you make from the horizontal. Using this coordinate system, ds will have a radial component dr and a perpendicular component r d theta, meaning that ds can also be written as this term, the square root of dr squared plus r d theta squared. So let's plug this information back into our expression for t. We'll sub out ds and we'll sub out our speed for r. Next, let's factor out a d theta from the square root. Great. This means we're now integrating an expression involving r and its derivative dr d theta, which I'll call r dash. Lastly, let's suck the denominator into our numerator. Also, since we're integrating with respect to theta, we integrate from our starting position, theta is equal to zero, to our finished position, theta is equal to pi. Don't forget what we're trying to do here. What we want to do is we want to minimize the whole expression by finding some suitable function, r of theta. That's our whole game plan here. To do this, we'll need some help from the Euler-Lagrange equation which, crudely put, says if you have an expression involving theta, r, and r dash, like this, then t is minimized so long as it satisfies this condition. But this is actually a bit of overkill, because in our case, we don't have a theta explicitly mentioned in the integral. As a result, we can use the simplified Beltrami identity, which says that t is minimized so long as r satisfies this expression, where c is just some constant. Great, now we have a formula to find our curve r. In our case, l is equal to r dash on r plus one, all to the power of a half. And this means del l del r dash is calculated by bringing down the half, subtracting one from the exponent, and multiplying by the inside derivative. There we go. Now let's put everything together. To simplify this, let's multiply top and bottom of this guy by the square root term. Amazingly, these two terms in the numerator cancel, and we're left with 1 divided by this square root term is equal to a constant. Let's square and take the reciprocal. And now let's subtract 1 and the square root. Notice the right-hand side is just a constant. So let's call that constant a. All right. Now we have a simple differential equation to solve for r. Multiply both sides by r and rewrite r dash as dr d theta. Let's separate these variables once again and integrate. On the left-hand side, we'll get the natural log of r. And on the right-hand side, since a is a constant, we'll get a theta plus another integrational constant I'll call b. This can be written as this 
which can also be written as this. And voila, we have the equation of the curve that minimizes time. Well, let's see what this curve looks like. It looks like a spiral which changes depending on the constants a and c. Let's restrict our view from theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to pi, so we can see our path from start to finish. In our case, our optimal path occurs when c is equal to one and a is about 0.35. To be more precise, we'll have to plug in our starting position r is equal to 1 when theta is equal to 0, and our finished position, r is equal to 3 when theta is equal to pi. And there we have it. Our optimal path of least time occurs when c is equal to 1 and a is equal to log 3 over pi. Now, just to confirm our answer, I also wrote this MATLAB script, which numerically solves for the optimal path. Here's the result of that script. As you can see, the solver tries to get there fastest by exploding outwards, where the speeds are largest. But later, it settles in on the optimal spiral shape we found earlier. Absolutely beautiful. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little puzzle. Thanks so much for watching, and a link to the code that I made in MATLAB is written below. Thanks so much.